So if you could just introduce yourself, your full name and title, please. My name's Nikki Reid. I'm the Chief Executive of the Scottish Professional Football League Trust. Um, Nikki, obviously we've announced today that Mr James Anderson is going to be donating money uh, via the SPFL Trust uh, to SPFL clubs. Can you just give me your initial reaction to that, first of all? I just think it's hugely exciting. I think this is such a challenging time for football and the communities in which in which they operate and support. And so for us to be able to bring this news today, thanks to the hugely generous donation from Mr Anderson, is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, and it's not something we, we would have envisaged happening um, without somebody stepping up in the way that he has. And so we're hugely grateful. A lot of football fans out there will be wondering how this is going to work. Can you just give me a, a brief overview to start with, please? Yeah, absolutely. So I think what's been key here through all of our discussions with James is that he completely and utterly understands the value and importance of football to Scottish culture and communities. And when initial discussions were taking place with James, um, one of the key things that he felt was really important was to ensure our football club survive, uh, not just for themselves and for the sport, but for our communities. Um, and so effectively, uh, we'll be making funds available to football clubs and at a later stage, they're associated to charities and they'll, they'll serve two purposes. One of those will be able to help clubs in the face of all of the challenges that have been brought forward through the COVID-19 pandemic so they'll be able to use the funds to help address some of those issues but also that whatever they do with those funds has to also have some sort of community benefit and that's something that my team will work with the clubs to, to, um, to be clear on and also to ensure that we can deliver for people who rely so heavily and even more so on our clubs through the midst of the pandemic. The money is going to be split between the SPFL Trust and the clubs. Can you just explain the split to me, please? Yeah, sure. So we've essentially tried to keep things really simple and we'll be splitting the fund up into three separate parts. Uh, the first of which is the COVID-19 crisis fund and that is the element that will make £2.1 million available directly to SPFL clubs by way of grants of around £50,000 uh, per club. Um, the second element of that will be the Scottish Football United project. And um, this is something we've been working on for, for a period of time, particularly since the pandemic um, took hold. And that will be a really exciting piece of work that we'll now be able to bring forward um, because of the donation that James has been able to make. And it will have a particular benefit as well uh, to the lower league clubs in the way that we're being able to structure that piece of work. And then the last and uh, third part of what we're going to use the money for is the Anderson Fund. And effectively, that is the gift aid on the donation. So £625,000 which we will be able to use for the furtherance of our charitable objectives on new projects. And it's very likely that those new projects will all have some form of COVID related element to it. We live in a very different world now than we did even six months ago. Um, and so having the flexibility with this fund to be able to create new projects that can respond to that whilst meeting our own charitable objectives is hugely exciting and forms the third and final part of the work that we'll do with this grant. You've mentioned the pandemic there a few times. What do the clubs have to do to access this money? So we'll use our normal processes in the same way that we do for the distribution of any of our other grants or programmes. Uh, they'll be asked to complete an expression of interest process and they'll be given three choices on that. They can either uh, seek to draw down the £50,000, they can choose not to draw down the £50,000 if for any reason they felt they didn't want to or it wasn't needed or appropriate or they can choose to draw down the £50,000 and donate it directly to their own community trusts. Um, from that point, they'll have to tell us how they plan to spend the funds, um, and they'll also have to tell us in a wee bit of detail about the community benefit that will come from that. And provided those two things are taken care of, and a few other general charitable grant checks, um, then they'll be able to draw down those funds, and we hope to be able to make that available to them really quickly. Obviously, it in modern times, people tend to be quite cynical. So what does Mr. Anderson want in return for his money? 
He doesn't. Uh, and it's a, a hugely refreshing position to be in, um, not just in football, but from a charitable perspective. Uh, James Anderson is a genuine philanthropist. He has uh, donated funds to a variety of different charities, both in the UK, Scotland uh, and in the States and elsewhere further afield. Uh, and effectively, he just wants to be sure that the money is spent sensibly and that it goes to help football in this current crisis and that there is a direct community benefit for those communities who rely on the work that their clubs and trusts do. So nothing in return as such, but surely there must be some ties in there that maybe give Mr Anderson some influence at some point or, or any other ties that, that may be involved in this? Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Um, so this donation is being made uh, without qualifications or preconditions relating to the SPFL uh, or any of the other matters which uh, others may think might be tied into this. And it's probably worth noting as well that although we're the charity associated with the SPFL, we're an entirely separate and independent organisation. We've got our own board of trustees. We are governed by the charity regulator. And so there is no tie-in whatsoever in any way, and nor does Mr Anderson want there to be to anything to do with league reconstruction, relegation places, specific clubs, absolutely none. In terms of how Mr Anderson wants the money to be used, you mentioned a bit about that earlier, but has there been any discussions exactly how it will be used? Does he have any sort of demands on how it should be used? None at all. So uh, James recognises that our clubs and our club trusts and ourselves and the league are all uh, organisations who are dealing with this firsthand in terms of the impact of the pandemic on football. And he trusts that we know and our clubs know what will make the most significant difference to them. Um, I think it's worth noting that the only thing that clubs won't be allowed to use the funds for is to pay wages, um, certainly player wages or managers wages. Um, however, we recognise that there are examples of the type of things that the money might be useful for and perhaps it's worthwhile just to, to chat through a couple of those and what that means by way of community benefit also. Um, say, for example, a club wanted to use some of the funds to buy um, a piece of COVID testing equipment and they're, they're expensive pieces of equipment. Um, once you have bought the equipment, there's also per head costs associated with every test that you would run through that, that, that system. Um, so an example might be that a club would purchase that equipment to use with their training facilities or their clubs, their staff. Um, what we're asking is if that equipment is purchased in a community, that clubs would also make that available to other local community groups who would then only have to cover the per head cost and that removes the capital expenditure from community groups. So that's probably a really simple, straightforward example of how this money can be used. And this is a type of discussion we've had with James around how we think this can work to ensure that there's a genuine community benefit. But in terms of Mr. Anderson himself, I think he very much trusts that we understand the environment that we're working in and what will make the biggest difference to our clubs and trusts throughout the pandemic. Just to move on a little bit from Mr. Anderson, we've discussed them quite a bit. Um, the clubs themselves, up until this point, have already been putting in lots of work throughout COVID-19. Can you just tell me your thoughts on how the clubs have responded to that? Yeah, I mean, we've always known that our clubs sit in the heart of our communities and they work day in, day out, far out with every second Saturday where there's a home fixture to support communities. And they do that in a range of different ways. And so we knew that there was potential for our clubs to get involved in some form of response when the pandemic hit and we understood the severity of the implications of that. To say I have been blown away by the work that has gone on at our clubs uh, wouldn't be an understatement. The variety of work that they've undertaken, um, the, the range of it, but also the volume of it. Um, has been absolutely staggering and we've seen thousands of volunteers mobilised through our club networks and our trust networks to support some of the most vulnerable people in our communities you know and if there was ever if there was ever an example of the role that our clubs do play and have an even further potential to play then I think they've absolutely shown how invaluable they are through this crisis and actually it's just been wonderful to see and some really powerful stories have emerged from it and we very much hope to share that through our trusted to support campaigning as things develop and progress.